Okay, Assalamualaikum. Selamat tengah hari. Uh, hari ini 11 hari bulan Februari. 11, 12, 13, 14. So lagi tiga hari lagi Asal Puni Raju akan menyambut ulang tahun yang ke-10 tahun. So hari ini episod 30 bukan episod terakhir tapi insya Allah, insya Allah nanti masa uh, hari anniversary itu kita ada uh, special guest on our special day. Okay. So hari ini kita ada lagi dua tetamu. Salah seorang tetamu ni uh, sebelum ni dia tanya saya tau, dia text saya, dia, 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 dia text, dia tanya BTS tu apa. <laughs> dia ingat itu uh, Korean group tapi it's not. BTS is actually behind the scene. So uh, daripada episod 1 sampai episod 29 sebelum ni kita actually cerita, berkongsi cerita dengan kita punya warga uh, Yasa Peneraju uh, hashtag ini cerita saya versi BTS ataupun versi behind the scene. So bila kita cakap behind the scene ni kita nak uh, bercerita lah apa yang berlaku di sebalik kita dah merealisasi aspirasi lebih 43,000 penerima faedah setakat ni melalui lebih 370 program uh, daripada 2012 sampailah tahun uh, 2022 ni sebanyak tu lah kita dah uh, hasilkan individu dan sebanyak melalui sebanyak tu lah program yang kita dah buat. Okay, so dua tetamu hari ni boleh kenalkan diri dari departemen mana dan dah berapa lama kerja kan Sepraju. Ya, uh, seorang individu ni dia merupakan wakil terakhir departemen ni dan seorang lagi uh, merupakan uh, wakil kedua daripada pengarah kat Sepraju. So sila kenalkan diri, kita mula dengan ni lah wakil terakhir dari uh, <laughs> departemen yang ni. <laughs> Okay. Hi everyone. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. So I'm Nave and also doctor and to everyone yang tengah tengok this uh, ini cerita saya uh, secara langsung di Facebook ya yeah, Sampai Raju. So basically I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Rosita. You can call me Zita. Uh, basically uh, I as a management trainee uh, in Yaya Sampai Raju di bawah programs and service delivery management atau lebih dikenali as a CSDM. Uh, which is is uh, per operational department lah in Yayasan ni. So okay. how long I have been working in Yayasan? Basically tak lama, macam baru lagi. Um, plus minus around 7 months, 6 months macam tu. So actually Zita adalah antara orang yang baru lah di Yayasan punya raja ni. Yeah. Orang baru tapi kita letak hujung-hujung. Tak tahu kenapa. Jadi tengoklah, dengarlah nanti cerita dia macam mana. <laughs> okay, our next guest. Silakan. Okay, thank you Anif and hi Rosita. Um, first of all, very excited to be here on the set with a very young person. I feel uh, a little bit uh, out of place sebab dah sangat senior compared to the other spokesperson here today. Um, nama saya Amina Joseta Kayani. Uh, saya selaku pengarah strategi dan perhubungan, director strategi and engagement lah. So um, my role here bertanggungjawab terhadap hala tuju strategi Yayasan Peneraju dan juga uh, pengarah fungsi perhubungan lah which is engagement ya. Yeah. Uh, so saya berurusan dengan stakeholders termasuklah public, private and now we are actually growing our wins uh, across the borders internationally. Saya mula berkhidmat dengan Yayasan Peneraju. Um, actually, surprisingly, it's a very special date to us. 14th of February last year. So hmm. this Monday actually marks um, one year lah of my anniversary of being with Yayasan Peneraju. And I'm so excited to celebrate it with Gang Y family sebab it's also our 10th year of anniversary on Monday. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Yeah, I didn't realize that. <laughs> tak apa. <laughs> Nanti saya boleh cakaplah dengan PNC bisik-bisik kat PNC awal hari oh, ini. Tak adalah. No lah. I don't want to steal the thunder of Yayasan Peneraju. <laughs> Just a little bit more about me so that um, because I, I am not as young as um, um, Rosita and I'm a lot younger actually. <laughs> uh, I would like to just tell you a little bit about my background so that you understand where I came from and uh, what kind of uh, values I celebrate. I always like to be seen as a talent builder. So kalau there is a job called talent builder, that's me. Uh, wherever I go, I'm always building talent and I'm motivating people. So this is the only element that is really consistent throughout my 26 years lah bekerja kan. Yeah. Uh, mulai dengan corporate, lepas tu I masuk academia, berkhidmat dengan tiga buah universiti yang berlainan. Uh, 
private, public, and also international, one university. And then I moved out back into the corporate with a tech company. And now I'm with Yayasan Peneraju. All along, all the time, I've been looking into how to build talent, either as an academic, lecturer, perunding, or learning and development head, and now pengarah strategi dan perhubungan. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Tamina. It's your uh, background and also your previous, previous experience lah sebelum ni. Okay, Rosita, uh, maybe you can tell the viewers apa you punya uh, functions ataupun your job roles kat because we know PSDM is the main engine dekat SM Penaraju, the operations kat SM Penaraju. So we know PSDM ni lah yang design program, yang execute program. So maybe you can share with the viewers uh, what you do kat SM Penaraju. Okay. So basically, like I said before, uh, Zita Masuk ya, saya ni kembaru. So as a, and uh, I as a trainee lah, kan? So mm -hmm. masuk dalam uh, apa ni PSDM ni, uh, PSDM ni lah yang macam tu lah betul lah macam Anu cakap is engine to the yes, kan? So uh, what I can share basically, I don't like uh, apa ni ada banyak experience tau. Tapi uh, because why I said that because the first day itself, entire sempur masa tu stick COVID. Uh, mm. So everything is online. Uh, mm. The first day online, introduce myself pun online. So masa tu kan tak boleh go to the office lagi apa semua. So yeah, at first to be honest lah, um, it's hard for me a bit to communicate and stuff. Tapi with the help of my team, my four ladies, Nana, Ain, Shaira and uh, masa tu oh I didn't want Afiq uh, The yeah. only guy in our team So they helped me a lot So what I can share to all of you To doctor and also Ani Is what I've uh, been doing lah in SN mm -hmm. Okay So what I can share is uh, uh, Berkenaan program Di bawah jagaan Zita itself Which is uh, HIP program High impact program Okay so basically, high impact program ni is uh, macam is an initiative tambahan ataupun special intervention uh, yang kita perkenalkan di bawah Yasan Peneraju. So, bawah HIP program ni ada banyak. Ada programs, ada data labeling, ada allergen and so many more. So, uh, kenapa kita buat HIP program kan? One of the uh, reason is because of the pandemic now. Sebab ramai yang kena retrain, susah dapat pekerjaan. So, what we did in Yasan is that um, kita nak help people. Uh, kita nak help people to upskill or reskill themselves. Okay. Uh, sebab all this program yang kita provide ni is uh, kita bagi set juga for them to use. So uh, itulah uh, sebabkan now is pandemic apa semua kita nak tolong orang kan. So jadi YP uh, for the end uh, hit program ni uh, it's a short course program tau. So, short course program ni ialah since now kan susah, it's online. Ah, uh, It's online and also short course. So, the longest will be around four weeks. The shortest one day. Which Zita pun tak tahu like before this lah kan. Macam kalau tak tahu, kalau tak masuk ya kan. Tak tahu pun. Eh, ada rupanya macam one day punya online course ni kan. Lepas tu boleh dapat cert pula tu. Macam, to be honest, Zita kalau jumpa like my cousin ke, my friend, Zita macam tanya tau, eh, you guys kalau nak masuk, macam apa ni, kalau ada nak ada any program, this, this program, kalau nak masuk, bagi tahu tau. <laughs> macam tu lah. So, macam from there, uh, what I did is uh, Zita, one of the people yang vet. Uh, the first review lah, kiranya. First review yang vet. So, yeah, that is what I did lah in uh, Yayasan as a trainee. Okay. I nak bully lah, I nak tanya lagi, I nak bully you. Uh, so, HIP program ni, uh, siapa je yang boleh join? Siapa je yang boleh apply? Okay. HIP program ni, everyone boleh join. 45 years old, anti, uh, 18 and 45. Oh uh, no, 45? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, doctor. <laughs> Tapi you, you look young, doctor. Uh, you 35. Tapi, <laughs> tapi, <laughs> tapi assessment <laughs> is not according to looks. <laughs> Never mind. Tapi uh, it's fair, it's fair. I think 45 is a fair age to actually yeah. target. Mm -mm. So, kita tak ada macam hardkan. Uh, memang kita hardkan uh, anti-45. Tapi I think it's, it's okay lah for those people kan yang, yang dengan pandemic now susah nak dapat kerja. 
susah uh, ada yang kena buang even you budak baru pun I mean like baru kerja pun boleh jadikan so kita nak kita nak apa ni bagi peluang uh, ataupun for them to upskill or reskill themselves lah so, itulah apa yang Zita buat in Yesam Penaraju Okay, alright nantilah I circle back to you with more questions eh <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Dr. Amina being a director of strategy engage, engagement uh, kita dah dengar last um, last Wednesday uh, apa tu uh, job roles uh, director of operation so sekarang ni maybe you can share what director of strategy and engagement dekat SM Praju uh, buat sebenarnya apa pasal strategi yang yang you buat apa pasal engagement tu yang, yang buat basically yang menyumbang kepada SM Praju punya mandate Okay, uh, let me put it this way. I try and make it interesting a bit lah. Eh? Yeah. If, imagine a room full of people. Mm-hmm. Okay, all so energized with so much energy, stamina and it's within an arena lah. Ada mm-hmm. ramai orang ni. They are all running tau in all directions and they're not sure where they really need to go and then what do they really need to do but they are also full of energy and they are running and running all they know is they cannot stop because if they stop it shows that they are not actually working and giving it back to the nation now the strategy's role is to help with the directing of the people towards a goal so they are running in different pathways some are running sideways some are running backward tapi dia semua menghala kepada the same goal mm-hmm. so it's like ensuring that they are all knowing what is the purpose of them running yeah and then which is the direction they are running so the analogy boleh ditambah dengan macam they have to move glass pieces you know kaca mm-hmm. and they have to move the glass pieces through the different pathways which is our trust lah you know our different programs kan towards that goal the end goal apa dia to build on talent capacity to build on talent capability and potential to derive an income. Itu goal kita. So they go in all directions and this class kaca ni dalam uh, journey towards that goal, dia akan polished. Slowly and slowly by the time they reach that goal, they will be more like a diamond instead of kaca. So orang cakap tukar kaca menjadi permata lah. Is, is diamond permata? Yeah. It is right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically with the engagement role pula It's like addressing the very critical role Sebab in this whole world We are all in a world where perception matters How people believe and trust and see us, right? Whether individuals or organisations So Yayasan Peneraju, we want to be seen as The sole, the main, not the sole The premier agency in developing talent and we want people to know what we are doing so that they can join hands and have synergy, do things together collaboratively. And that's the strategic engagement role so that the people know and they want to come and offer value because that's all about collaboration nowadays. It's not about doing something alone all the way. When you join hands, the sum of its individual parts will become bigger than the sum of its whole, you know, kalau you calculate kan. So basically that's the enge- uh, what do you call it? engagement role. Jadi macam if you look at the mandate kan of Yayasan Peneraju, we are all about building talent lah as I said. It is a very simple mandate tau but it is not small. It is a national mandate to build upon the Bumi Putra talent, empower them so that they can have a better livelihood later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All about impact and all that lah. So that's the analogy of the role. Yeah. When you said that you are a talent builder tadi and, and you, you said that you enjoy motivate people, I understand dah. <laughs> you can explain your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, <laughs> man, <laughs> so interesting to understand easily. Kan Rosita kan? Betul tak? Betul. <laughs> so the analogy yang Dr. Amina uh, apa, I explain to uh, what the viewers understand lah. <laughs> the group of uh, strategy and engagement punya department dekat Yasa Penerajut ni macam mana. Betul. So, Alright. Thank you. Rosita, walaupun yeah. you baru kata 6 bulan ke 7 bulan kan tadi Yes Tapi tetap nak tanya, your, your, your cerita, ini cerita Rosita What is the most memorable ataupun inspiring things lah Or maybe your personal thoughts lah uh, Pasal Yayasan Peneraju 
Mm-mm. Because you said you kata you tak banyak experience dengan scholars kan You yes. mm-hmm. masuk through online uh, Masa covid lagi, masa MCO lagi So uh, what is the most um, memorable thing that you remember Ataupun you uh, witness ke your personal thought ke Or maybe you want to say about the culture in Yassam Praju In uh, handling scholars ke Still mm-hmm. kan, ini cerita Rosita Okay, yeah, as uh, true as what Anif cakap kan, uh, kita tak berpulang lagi untuk uh, macam English with scholars uh-huh. but even so, uh, it's online, kita uh-huh. kan kita buat uh, every time before buat program, kita akan buat onboarding so uh-huh. from there, even so tak face to face with the scholar kita dapat face, I mean like online, virtually ha. so from there Zita itself, Zita dapat uh, kenal juga walaupun virtual uh, dapat kenal, dapat berborak so yang uh, dengan cara macam tu dapat kenal lah okay and then the next one is um, okay to tell you eh, I'm even doctor before this uh, Zita work as uh, apa in entertainment in industry so now I work uh, in yayasan yang changing people life So for, uh, for for me to be honest before this tak, tak macam tak tahu tau because before this I deal with concert with uh, TV shows uh-huh. so, event so benda-benda macam tu bila masuk yang yasan I literally help people ah uh, bila I help people ni di perasaan tu sebenarnya macam lain tau macam macam ni nak cakap macam okey bayangkan macam orang tu tak dapat kerja Lepas tu kita tolong orang tu, orang tu dapat kerja Dia macam satisfaction lah for, for me For me, I rasa macam Ui, bestnya dapat tolong orang sampai tahap macam ni Which tak pernah imagine langsung Dapat tolong orang sampai boleh dapat kerja Sampai macam boleh buat, uh, bila join our program And then dapat set, lepas tu diorang bagi tahu sendiri macam oh, uh, hari, hari tu kita orang masuk program ni 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 And then now sebabkan program ni 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 Saya dah dapat kerja Mm-hmm. I macam, those feedback yang dengar tu macam happy Ah, ha, Yang tu one of yang feelings yang tak dapat rasa kat tempat lain Yang especially works before this yang kita work in entertainment Benda tu tak dapat So for me, benda tu macam valuable lah for me Rasa macam bestnya dapat tolong orang So from there, bila dengar macam tu kan Macam dapat tolong orang, orang ni dapat kerja uh, ni So benda tu rasa best, rasa macam nak buat lagi Macam okay, nak cari, nak tolong all the bumi putra out there uh, Untuk macam, yelah dapat pekerjaan sebab faham now susah kan Kita dengan this world, so many things happen lah nowadays kan uh, apa semua. So yeah, tu lah one of Macam mana my thought lah uh, uh, Work at uh, Inyas dan Peraja ni Okay, okay. I nak tanya lagi juga Okay <laughs> Tadi kan uh, Dr. Minah said kan, uh, Dr. Minah punya experience uh, adalah sedikit kena mengena kan because she used to work at different universities mm. uh, uh, lebih kurang environment yang sama dengan sang penaju mm. but you before this in entertainment industry yeah. and sekarang eh, memang, memang I boleh, boleh, boleh kata totally different lah yeah. so mm. you rasa you rasa lepas ni you akan kerja dekat industri balik ke ataupun you 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 memang Uh, you dah uh, jatuh cinta dengan uh, apa tu environment <laughs> yang nak tolong uh, people's life ni Okay, uh, okay. Oh, Maybe nak nak masuk rancangan uh, <laughs> rancangan tolong orang kat TV show ke I, I don't know <laughs> Okay Entertainment juga uh, Entertainment tu of course lah macam ada masih lagi ada di hati kan Tapi bila kita Itulah bila kita cakap bila perasaan dapat tolong orang Entertainment is always happy things Tahu macam happy kita nak enjoy kan Entertainment nak dengar konser apa semua kan <laughs> Happy things tapi bila bila tolong orang ni feeling dia lain tau ni Dia macam best lah best ah So insya Allah dalam tolong orang kita pun boleh buat entertainment betul tak ha, Kita boleh combine the uh, entertainment dengan changing people life ni ha. So benda tu tak jadi problem lah to me because best lah best Dapat tolong orang ni those feeling tak ada susah nak dapat ha. Benda tu bukan kita macam benda yang senang untuk orang buat pun kan Tak semua orang pun macam boleh tolong orang So Zita yeah. work in yayasan ni I'm glad I'm glad because I can 
change people life to be a better 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 one lah as as uh, I said before macam tu dapat kerja tu kan mm-hmm. macam Zita pun faham dulu Zita pun susah nak dapat kerja ha kan bila, bila susah nak dapat kerja lepas tu dapat kerja rasa happy tu lain macam tau lepas tu kita share with people yang orang yang tolong kita benda tu lain so yeah I I think I will stay on think people Ah. <laughs> boleh okay. boleh combine dengan entertainment dengan happy people. Eh, kita boleh combine. Tu tak ada okay. problem. <laughs> Betul lah but uh, entertainment maybe entertainment yang macam pergi concert ke TV show ke apa itu itu um, gembira yang lain. Yeah, but um, untuk uh, on the other hand uh, kerja menolong orang kat SM Prajun ni pun uh, entertainment juga tapi dalam bentuk kita menyentuh hati orang and okay. seeing them grow seeing their journey kan daripada macam yang cakap tadi lah kita tolong dia uh, pergi training dan dia dapat kerja tu pun menggembirakan kita juga yes, betul betul heeh setuju setuju apa tak you <laughs> alright thank you Zita ah uh, Tata Amina um since 14 Februari ni you punya anniversary juga ah uh, kan mm-hmm. so apa cerita yang you nak share dengan the viewers hari ni okey uh, i want to share Um, so many things actually Anif <laughs> so, so many things So I will just give you very very quick sharing So that I try and touch as many as possible okay Boleh. One of the first things before I forget mm-hmm. I was accompanied by a very interesting character To one of my first engagements to Melaka And you know who that is <laughs> Can you please share who is it? <laughs> Yalah, you lah. We went for the first engagement. Share lah, kan? share lah. Cita tak tahu. Cita tak tahu. Ha, share, share. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so actually, kan Anif and uh, Ita, I actually went through a very steep learning curve lah dekat Yayasan Peneraju ni. Because actually, walaupun kita kecil kan, banyak benda yang kita buat dan the role was like very huge so that I I wanted to learn everything as much as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. So na- now about the sharing about my experiences lah that is very uh, memang it sticks to the mind kan especially at my age not a lot of things sticks to the mind so um, these are the ones that I can remember. Number one last year we had the opportunity to celebrate insanely intellectual professional scholars over their success buka puasa sama-sama dekat this place I still remember the place called Copper Pot dekat uh, Taipan and I couldn't help myself but feel so proud of these scholars they're super smart you know even sitting with them I felt so small even though I'm so experienced and working you know because um I had to get I got to know uh, Shafiq Shafiq manager at EPF and then there was also uh, Haziq uh, Hafiz Hafiz Muhammad I think his name was uh, from Bank Negara mm-hmm. and then they actually were talking about the success of um, the whole CFA program lah under the professional trust and then uh, as we all know you know how insane our um apa accounting scholars are for continuously macam tak bagi chance lah dekat orang lain kan to grab mm-hmm. all the uh, the awards of all the exam papers kan mm-hmm. and then the second one is uh, meeting up with the a group of 30 alumni yang hebat-hebat belaka daripada all walks of life and different different trust over in a program organized by our shift lead, lead lah. Uh, her name is Marina. She's with us. And then I got to meet up with people like, for example, the CFO from uh, LTAT, some tech leads, uh, some young executives, accountants from Pricewaterhouse and another big four. And the feeling is just macam overwhelming tau when you see there's so much hope and potential for the leadership pipeline of the Yayasan Peneraju and also the Bumi Putra entrepreneurs because as we all know even from the tech punya line we have uh, one of the first um, potentially uh, you know huge companies kan macam orang kata unicorns lah in tech which is Pandai app kan uh-huh. anyway uh, the third one <coughs> experiencing first time masuk pelabuhan Oh my god, that was like the oh. best. That was in one of the programs related to what you're looking after, Rosita. Uh, it's the link program. Okay, closely yeah. related, part together with HIP, kan? Also yeah, yeah. And okay. we got to go to Port Tanjung to Pelepas and we play some 20 plus uh, scholars under Port uh, Planner programs and Young Engineer programs. And you know, 
it made me realize how much kalau kita tak explore, kita tak speak to others, kita tak network, kita tak membaca, kita tak tahu yang dunia kat luar tu sebenarnya huge opportunities. We Betul. just need to go out and speak to them. Betul. You know, port industry ni one of the most resilient. And then after that, we also had to work the opportunity to work on pilot programs with uh, the SNE and PSDM team, you know, spreading our wings, going across the borders of the international borders, you know, with um, turning affiliates uh, into uh, full CAs and apa lagi. Kita go into a lot of niche projects with special projects into, you know, creatives, your area also, Rosita. You know, actually, the yeah. truth is, eh, I really... Uh, can see the potential in creative industry tau sebenarnya. That might be the hmm. next uh, golden uh, bowl that we should actually explore kan? Okay. And then the green factory yeah. Yeah, and true. yeah. And then ada tak habis lagi? Sikit lagi. <laughs> <laughs> ada uh, exploring a lot of opportunities in high tech, technology and all these high tech parks and data with, uh, houses and all that with the uh, tech program and high skill programs kan? And also that includes, you know, all the artificial intelligence solution providers and all that. And over and above all, working with the different personalities in our gang why? Because, mm -hmm. you know, being a talent builder myself, internally also, I really celebrate the same values. I really feel that, you know, I'm growing fonder and fonder of everyone in Yayasan Penaraju in different ways because I can see the diversity brings on strength. Okay. There's no doubt there's always, you know, different points of view and there's always a debate which is very healthy because it's very unhealthy kalau semua orang bersetuju je dengan something, you know what I mean? And then also yes. not forgetting, we are very good at what, you know, soft skills. Hmm. Yayasan Peneraju, bukan nak cakap maku, masuk baku lah, angkat sendiri tapi sebenarnya <laughs> We are one agency kan, I tak pernah nampak lah how we actually marry the two worlds together. We have our technical or hard skills programs kan yang end up with certification semua tu kan. Tapi we marry them with soft skills which is what we call NDP kan. Yeah. And we are going to scale it up lah and that's with the HANAS team lah mainly under TUNAS 2.0 and all that you know. So, um, yeah, Th these, all this make up a very, I would say, vibrant experience working with the people outside and inside Yayasan Peneraju. Betul. And the public also, for that matter. Uh -huh. The public is our main stakeholders, lah, Doctor. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And so, Maybe. I bring on the same values to them. Yeah. Wow. I agree when you said that when we, uh, when we don't, uh, we need to go out, we need to read, we need to meet people to know Uh, the demands kan, apa industri ataupun sektor yang betul-betul uh, berpeluang ataupun berpotensi untuk kita offer pada orang barulah kita tahu kan, so that's where kita punya uh, strategic planning punya department, buat analysis and then uh, discuss dengan, buat meeting dengan our apa, advisory council semua tu that's where yeah. kita explore new industries, new sectors untuk kita offer kepada orang kat luar sana kan so the more the more opportunities yang kita explore, the more programs yang kita boleh offer untuk orang kat luar sana and the more people yang boleh benefited Absolutely I nak tanya you satu soalan Dr. Amina, what do you think of a culture dekat asal peneraju ni? Bila you tengok kita sometimes gila-gila kan <laughs> No. <laughs> Actually, the transition was quite um, smooth for me because uh, from the previous uh, job, mm -hmm. it was also a very young and vibrant team okay. uh, from the tech company. And as we all know, kan, how tech company punya culture, Uh -huh. Actually, they are as gila-gila, only that they are a little bit more, I would say, Uh, outgoing lah kot. Maybe mm -hmm. because also they really dress down most of the time and it's like a chill chill culture, you know, <laughs> where they wear ripped jeans and, and sneakers and all that. So um, transitioning from before that, from academia into that tech, uh, that one was a culture shock for me lah. Oh, okay. culture, <laughs> culture at Yayasan Peneraju, it's like I just blend in. But the funny thing is, you know, when we had our family day, I felt like my kids blended in better <laughs> because of the age gap. So when I, I looked at my children and then because it was all the families together, so they blended in with some of the young ones in our team lah. Uh -huh. kan? And so yeah, I just pretended <laughs> to be young. <laughs> You, you look young lah, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Right. Yeah, thank you. Music to my ears, Rosita. <laughs> 
thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Doctor. All right, uh, Rosita, since we are yeah. approaching Dr. Uh, Minat and Rosita, lah, since we are approaching 10th year, kan, this this Monday, this coming 14, so what are your hopes ataupun kata-kata uh, semangat lah you nak cakap, you nak sampaikan ada kat Aisam Praju, if Aisam Praju is a person, if you were a person, so what do you want to say to Aisam Penyaraju? Okay, mm-hmm. uh, apa yang Zita harap lah eh, tak banyak, like tak banyak pun, ada few je, the first one is like, uh, I really hope that kita give more, 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 more opportunity to people who trust out there. Because I believe uh, ramai lagi yang, yang sangat memerlukan all the opportunity. And ramai lagi yang mungkin ada yang tak aware and stuff like that. And then the next one, I hope also that kita give more uh, apa ni? Set yang boleh people out there, bumbu putra out there to use. Because ialah nowadays everything pun macam okay, kita nak, kena ada uh, kena ada set and stuff baru you can go to this, this, this. And hmm. then so yeah, um, yang tu uh, to of it and then uh, the third one is kita ada dekat out there bumbu putra sebada banyak talent yang kita pun sendiri macam tak tahu lagi ad, talent-talent yang di luar sana. So, so I hope that kita dapat mengupuk um, keluarkan segala bakat-bakat burung putra kita to the high level. Yeah. So, because one of our objective is actually to bring burung putra challenge to higher potential, to the highest potential yeah. actually. Yeah, betul. I nak, I nak deal dengan you lah Rosita. Nanti one day nanti you jadi TV producer Boleh lah feature ya sang penyeraju as as one of your shows ah <laughs> boleh confirm. And so kalau jadi doa lah banyak banyak. Eh. <laughs> boleh kita tip boleh boleh. <laughs> ah nanti I nampak nama uh, apa producer nanti Rosita tu nanti ah I I nak I nak I nak nak apa nak demand dengan dia. <laughs> Alright, thank you Rosita. Thank you. Doa Anna. Uh, anything you want to share since we are approaching our 10th anniversary this Monday? Uh, silakan. Okay. Um, before I forget, at the end of this, uh, I want to I wanna actually ask uh, Rosita to pick up on something that I'm going to do. So I'm going to sing one line and she has to sambut. Okay, Rosita? At the end of this. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, my final words for uh, Yayasan Peneraju uh, and the broader public lah since the public is our biggest stakeholder kan mm. Anif is um, I like to go with this abbreviation of uh, acronym of PACER P-A-C-E-R okay. purpose P for purpose so always have a purpose and sense of purpose in life whatever you do so without your why, the purpose is your why, kan? Kenapa? Kenapa you nak buat macam tu? Yeah, and um, you will always be lost if we, you don't have it, okay? Another P which is important is always be present. That is especially true, especially nowadays lah. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, you know, with the phone and with the gadgets and with so much happening, kan? We are there in the moment, but we are not really there. We are only body there physically. Tapi... Uh, life will just pass us through, pass mm-hmm. us by without us realizing. So always be present in the lives of others, your loved ones, your family, your friends, your people, your acquaintances, anyone that you're with, always be present, focus. Yeah. And the A is for adaptable. Adaptability is by far one of the strongest, most uh, critical skill sets that anyone can have, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, accountant or whether you are a high skill worker, a drone technologist, a TV producer, a hair stylist, you have to be adaptable. C, PACER ya tadi, P-A-C. C is communicate, connect, collaborate. Do that all the time. E, empathize and R, keep it real. So my advice to Yayasat Peneraju, let's keep going and give stellar performance, okay? My advice to all of you out there, whether you are already an alumni with us, whether you're in one of the programs with us, we have thousands of you in our pipelines. And then we have thousands more to give and help and touch the lives of. 
Never let anyone or anything in your life, your qualifications, your diploma, your certificate, your degree, define you. Never let anyone define you. You choose where you want to go and analyze it and make decisions yourself with the help of others and, you know, input of others. Just because you started off your life in a different pathway doesn't mean you can't move. I'm living example that you can. You can shift, you can change, you know, from accounting, move into HR, from academia, move into corporate, you know. It, it's all very possible. And then remember, no matter what, in your life, you must always look up, okay? You don't keep on looking back to kill yourself and say, I should have done that, alama. I should have done that, nisa, nisa, regret. Life shouldn't be full of regrets. The only reason why you look back in life is to learn from your lessons. How you did it right, keep doing those things. How you didn't do it right and things that you had, you know, challenges, how to overcome it. So it's lesson learned. And you always look forward. Spread your wings, keep your roots in the ground that will keep you humble. Humility and humbleness is what kills the best of leaders. Bila orang dah naik semakin tinggi, dia akan lupa. Mm-hmm. humility and that is a trait and character which is very expensive and it's these are all uh, tips and lessons that i'm telling you you will not learn it in books in school in university nothing this is called the school of hard knocks you will learn it in life and that is my advice to all of you up there hopefully lah this is my final words lah for yeah. all of you You, you really are a motivator lah, Doktor. Yelah tu. Yes, <laughs> rasa bila dengar tu macam nak dengar lagi lah, nak dengar lagi lah, Doktor. Depan, kalau ada scholars bermasalah, saya hantar Doktor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> boleh. Okay, now I haven't forgotten what I want to do with Rosita. You ready? Okay. Okay, I see one line, you sambut. If you cannot, then we try something else, okay? Okay. Okay, ready? I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> I think you about you every night and day. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tamba our own. Spread your wings, wings and, and fly. fly away. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, that's all. For me, Anil, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, that was fun. <laughs> all right, thank you, Rosita and Dr. Mina, for our. Uh, second final episode before uh, after this, inshallah, on 14 February we will have our final episode with our special guest on our special day. All right. Um, uh, for our programs, yang sudah muka, you can visit our website www.sampenaraju.com.my or uh, follow our social media accounts, kat Facebook, Twitter, dan juga Instagram. All right. Thank you so much again, Rosita and Atamina, for your sharing, for your experience, for the song, for the singing. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day. You too. Bye. Bye.